Hey everyone, this is Johnny O'Nose, and I'm playing Subnautica, the silent running update, and in this Let's Learn episode, I'm gonna rank all the new Cyclops modules, as well as show you where to find them all. The cool thing is, you can get most of them, with the exception of the hull module, just by making yourself a Seamoth and getting the pressure compensator from the Aurora. You're gonna be getting the power efficiency module for the Cyclops from the Aurora, might as well get that as well. So yeah, let's get into it. Once you have the Seamoth built, your radiation suit, as well as a bunch of tools, you're gonna to wanna to head on over to the Aurora and look for Life Pod 4, which is right on the left-hand side here. It's, you can easily see it because it's upside down on the surface of the water. Just keep your eye out for any Reapers that may be in this area. I didn't run into any in this area in my, in my Let's Play, but uh, they are here, because this is like my third take where, you know, a <laughs> good old Reaper ruined my day. Head on inside the Life Pod and open up the data box here. This will give you the first of many blueprints for the uh, for the Cyclops called the Creature Decoy. This will allow you to shoot a decoy away and get all those predators away from your good old Cyclops. All right, then um, before you head into the Aurora, make sure to head to the surface or as, as far down as you can go over here. Pick up the power transmitter, you know, the propulsion cannon, as well as the vehicle console fragments down here too and then jump inside the Aurora so that you can go pick up the pressure compensator for the Seamoth, as well as the power efficiency module for the Cyclops, as well as all the other stuff that you can get in there. Once you're inside the Aurora and you see this corridor, you so see you have signs that says Drive Room, Seamoth Bay, as well as the Prawn Bay on this side. Head inside this guy, do a little repairs to the door here. And once that's open, head on inside and get the pressure compensator for the Seamoth which is right on over to the left-hand side here on this little console. Then head inside the drive room to get the uh, the power efficiency module for the Cyclops, which can be found right here. Go ahead and click on that to get the power efficiency module, do all your repairs, scan all the things inside the Aurora, as well as, uh, you know, unlock the prawn if you happen to have your uh, laser cutter handy. All right, let's get out of the Aurora and look at all the wrecks where you can find all the other stuff. You can find three Cyclops data boxes here at the Sea Treaders wreck, which is at uh, a negative 1115.9, negative 168, negative 764.7. And you, if you can, if you hit F1, you'll be able to see the camera world position, which will allow you to figure out where your coordinates are at. Now, these data, data modules or data boxes um, are static in the game currently. This may change in the next update, but um, you can find these modules in multiple places. But the two wrecks that I'm going to show you are going to find give you five of them, and they're always there. I checked. I went, you know, I started the game a couple times to make sure that it wasn't random, and uh, they were here each of the three or four times that I tried it. Actually, this is my fourth time. So, here we go. So, we're at the Sea Treaders wreck. Let's head on over to the ground over here and you'll find the uh, Cyclops decoy tube upgrade grab that guy then you want to head on over to this other section on the right hand side here so this is two separate sections of this wreck you got to go through this hole here go through these doors do a Yui and you'll find the Cyclops docking bay repair module right here the third data box can be found in the second section of the wreck here all you have to do is burn down one of these doors and as you walk in, or swim in, you'll find the third one, which is the Cyclops Shield Generator. Pick that up, and you're good to go. You found three out of three of uh, the data boxes you can find in this wreck. Let's head on over to the Blood Kelp Trench Wreck. The Blood Kelp Trench Wreck isn't necessarily within range of your Seamoth, but if you've got a Sea Glide handy, you can easily head on down there. The location of this wreck is really close to the Sea Treaders Wreck at negative 1190.2 negative 299.1 and negative 385.0. So these are actually really easy data box to pick up. The first one is on the left hand side here. Be careful of that, uh, be careful of that depth. All right, let's just head on over here right next to the wreck, not even inside it. And you'll be able to find the uh, fire suppression system. There we go. Once you have the fire suppression, uh, just head on inside, and what you're going to be looking for is kind of like an elevator shaft. It's not that way. Here it is. Here's the elevator shaft. Ooh, look at that. Grappling arm. Beautiful. And uh, head on inside here, and you will find the last of the modules, which is the sonar upgrade. The last of the modules that you can pick up at this moment in time, technology-wise, in the game. 
once you've got a couple upgrades to your Seamoth, you know, get another pressure compensator, as well as a, you'll eventually get a signal to this life pod, life pod two. I think it will say something along the lines of a CTOU signal. Go ahead and follow that signal all the way down to the blood kelp two biome, which is at uh, negative 488.8. Negative 497.5, 1328.4. And uh, you will find the last of the data boxes, which is the Cyclops hull module. So you now have all of the uh, blueprints that you need to build every single one of the blueprints for the Cyclops. So you got the power efficiency module from the, uh, from the Aurora, the decoy tube, docking bay repair module, the Cyclops Shield Generator, the Cyclops Fire Suppression System, the Cyclops Sonar Upgrade, Cyclops Hull Module 1, and that will unlock Mark II as well. So let's go ahead and rank them. I'm going to classify these modules into three different tiers. Essential, good, and not great. So the first two is going to be the Cyclops Hull Module and the Cyclops Power Efficiency Module. I see both these modules as essential. Like. These have been in the game since the Cyclops has been around, and um, they're still tried and true. Like, you need to go to depth, so you need the hull module. Uh, you don't want to use them as, as much power as you normally do, so you use the power efficiency module. I know some folks have their power cell chargers inside their Cyclops, and I don't know if that still works or not. I've never done it, so I, I wouldn't be able to verify. The power efficiency module, there's stuff that uses a lot of power, and driving around for a long period of time, you're gonna need that power efficiency module in there. Uh, the second tier is the is the good. Uh, uh, the good tier would be uh, the Cyclops Shield Generator, as well as the Docking Bay Repair Module. And I'm going to go over each of these modules and show you show you them in action so that you can see for yourself if it's something that you want to put in your Cyclops. The modules that I would classify as not good would be the Sonar Upgrade, the Fire Suppression System, and the Decoy Tube Upgrade, which kind of leaves us in a nice situation where the ones that I like. I have enough slots for it. So I'll always have the shield generator, the docking bay repair module, the hull module, and the power efficiency module always installed in my Cyclops. All right, so let's go ahead and go over kind of examples of how to use each of these modules. In the latter portions of the game, you're gonna be taking a lot of damage <laughs> to your to your prawn suit or to your sea moth. Oh God, you can send all the way down here. So having the repair module, installed on your uh, on your uh, Cyclops. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm a little bit scared down here. I am using my uh, Let's Play character. Uh, See, so yeah, having the repair module installed on your Cyclops is really useful, uh, and it doesn't take up that much power either. So let's head on back to the Cyclops to repair this, uh, this prawn suit. So you can see, now that we're back in, you can see the health slowly rising on the prawn. I, it, I mean, if you've got your Cyclops in silent running mode, you can actually use this as kind of a safe haven to then, you know, heal up yourself if you got warped around and slashed up by warpers, as well as repairing your prom without having to waste valuable battery space or battery uh, power uh, when, you know, you're down in the depths and you're very, very far away from any of your of your bases. The shield generator is great for when you know there's a bunch of damage coming your way. So for instance, I'm, I'm gonna run at full speed towards this Dragon Leviathan. Seems like a real smart move, right? As soon as he turns about... Oh, he's he's burned up somebody else. All right, Cubs. Turn on the shield generator. This guy will be able to do no damage to you whatsoever. It's really nice. So for 15 seconds, you'll be completely safe from any damage. That includes running into uh, geometry or, or any of the environment which is good for me, but it also gives you a chance to get into silent running mode. So if you're under a heavy attack, you just pop your pop your shield and then jump into silent running and you'll be safe from any damage for a good long while. Be able to limp back and, and repair or just to run away silently and slowly. Uh, the only thing, the only downside for the shield generator is the fact that it takes up a lot of power. It takes about like 12% of your power. So keep that in mind. Don't use it too much. And there is a pretty decent cooldown. Like I was gabbing enough that it it renewed, but it's good like 30 seconds cooldown. So don't expect it to be, you know, be used over and over and over again, Mo mainly because the cooldown and the amount of power it's taking. Now that we've gone over the two what I consider good modules, let's go over the ones that I feel are not that great. 
Now, the decoy launcher upgrade allows you to hold five decoys instead of one. Decoys on their own, though, are kind of a pain to logistically manage. Like, uh, the creature decoy not only is like, it's a three by three, it's just the same size as the Z Glide, um, but it takes like three copper, you need like, uh, you need like copper wire, you need a battery, and you need like three titanium. It's kind of a pain to make. I mean, it's not hard to make, but it's, it's, you know, it's kind of a pain. I, I'm a very lazy player. So for me, it's like, I, I don't really feel the need to use a creature decoy. But um, we're going to go ahead and use it just so you can see what it's all about. But for me, like, I'd rather just go into silent running mode. So I got one loaded here. Let's go ahead and get us into a fight here and see how it works. It looks like we got some baddies right now, as well as a happy little larva to join our uh, adventure here. So let's get out of silent running and uh, pull all these guys towards us. Here they come. One's about to hit us. There it goes. This guy's coming as well. Looks like we got three of them. Ah, uh, lava lizards everywhere. All right, we're gonna sh shoot the decoy. There's our decoy on the map. And that gives us the opportunity to drive away. I mean, I could easily just push silent running, which would have made this a lot easier. But uh, yeah, that's the decoy in action. I was very excited to see that the Cyclops was getting a sonar upgrade, but after seeing it, I was a little bit sad. I was really hoping the Cyclops could be kind of like a mobile scanning, like a scanner room. But instead, this is just kind of the same thing that you receive from the Seamoth. It pings three times, which is nice, but the last thing I'm going to use to discover, you know, small caves and places that I can't really find, uh, if if I'm going to do that, I'm going to use the Sea Moth with the sonar upgrade on it. It pings three times. It's got a pretty good range. It uses up valuable power on the uh, the Cyclops, so it's about one or two percent every time you use it. But it's just the same old thing that you see from the Sea Moth. So for me, this is this is not that exciting. The last module I'm going to showcase is the fire suppression system. Now. When I heard about the fire suppression system, I'm like, yes, nice. I am totally all for this. I don't want to keep making fire extinguishers to put out the fires that come up on the Cyclops. But I noticed two things. The first thing is I don't really catch on fire that often. So that doesn't I like through my whole Let's Play series, I didn't catch fire once. And there was a couple times when my hull went down to 50 percent or something like that. I never caught fire, so it was never a huge issue for me. The only time I've caught fire when I when I purposely go out of my way to try to get the Cyclops damaged. The other thing I noticed was the fact that fires have like a random chance to occur based on how much damage you have. It's not like a threshold of damage. Like if you get down to like, you know, 25 percent or something like that, uh, you're going to see fires often, but they're not always going to occur. So we're going to we're going to get ourselves down to about 50 percent. And I'll show you what happens when you use the fire suppression system. All right, so we now have a fire. Now that, now that we're on fire, we're pretty damaged. The first thing you want to do is go, all right, I'm going to put out this fire. And the second thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to repair all that damage, right? So what happens when you use the fire suppression system is all the doors close and lock. So you actually can't go outside to start repairing the Cyclops. You're locked in. So you kind of have to sit and wait here. And based on how much damage you have, there is a high probability of you getting another fire while this suppression system is going on. So you're just kind of sitting here. You know, I'm in I'm in silent running mode to dissuade for additional damage. But yeah, I mean, there is a very high chance that you get another fire even before the cooldown goes off. So when I was testing this earlier, I got a fire right after the fire suppression went off. And um, yeah, I couldn't do anything about it other than just kind of put it out myself. So combined with the fact that the cooldown is so long that another possible fire can occur, as well as the fact that you actually can't repair the damage while the fire suppression system is going out, means that the system isn't really all that useful at all. So yeah, and that is all the modules. 
Alrighty folks, that is the video for today. So we went over the location of all the modules you can get for the Cyclops, as well as ranking them based off of performance and need and all that good stuff. So uh, this is Johnny O'Knows and I'm playing Subnautica, the silent running update. If you have any questions about Subnautica or any of the other games I support, please go ahead and leave your questions in the comments section below. Thanks so much for watching folks and I'll catch you all in the next episode.